What's up guys, Skyless here with Gears of War Lessons episode number 18. We're talking about the Retro Lancer today, which will be the third starting weapon video. As uh, I'll go ahead and link right here. I did a shotgun video not that long ago, and Lancer video just a couple weeks ago. So go ahead and check those out. I chose Retro because it's the weapon which I have the most experience with outside of my normal combo of Lancer and Nasher. So I've got about a thousand kills with it. When the game came out, I was actually using the Retro instead of the Lancer. And the more I played, the more I felt like the Retro wasn't very good. And playing over the past few days with the Retro has pretty much solidified my opinion, which I'll get into that. I've actually split the video into the good and the bad. So the first half will be more about the good points of the Retro and scenarios where it shines. And the second half will be about areas where it has trouble. And then we'll have some longer gameplay sessions. I got some good feedback last week about uh, the putting it all together bit with the digger. So we're going to do that with the retro and see where it's strong, where it's weak. And as you can see here, I actually listed the downtimes for these retro kills. One of the main points that the retro is strong at is flanking. So anytime you can catch someone with the retro, you're able to down them roughly before they can even react. I mean, 0.8 seconds. They might be able to get a roll off, but they're not going to be able to get into cover in that amount of time. So, again, it's really good shooting people in the back, but so is the hammer burst and the lancer. So, even with the good parts, I'm already uh, giving a little bit of a uh, but this. So, this isn't going to go well for the retro lancer during this video. You might as well call it Skywalls complains about the retro lancer for 10 minutes instead of a lesson video. But I swear I'm going to try and give some tips. So, as you saw, feathering uh, at medium and long range actually almost doubled the downtimes that I was getting. I am not an expert retro user. Uh, I've seen some people were pretty good at feathering, and I used to be better at it, and I couldn't get it back during the four to five days I was playing with the retro to get this video done. So, ideally, you wouldn't be firing one bullet, and then wait, shoot one bullet, wait, shoot one bullet, but get it timed perfect so they're all coming out like a hammer burst almost. If you can get that down, then theoretically, theoretically, you can down people in like a second. But there's so many different variables and it makes it so difficult to do. Uh, don't think you'll see me hit that stride at all during this video. Uh, I've been close sometimes, but I just haven't been able to get it. I don't know if it's because I use the Onza and the triggers are a bit different on the Onza. But who knows? Ideally, one bullet. So if you sit in a private room and mess with it for probably an hour or so daily for a while until you get it down you probably be able to get it again i don't think the payoff is there so i haven't done it at all so you're gonna see me mostly spraying and praying during this video <clears throat> and here this is actually the same guy you're gonna see in these three clips and i kind of approached the battle three different ways there but the retro is pretty good when you're in a 1v1 or a 1v2 scenario it's uh again got that dropping power and you can go wide on people but the better the player is, the more likely they are going to uh, stand their ground and get a good clean shot on you as you go wide. And then the retro becomes less and less effective as you get damaged because you can't afford to stand there perfectly still firing your retro. So I think the best approach is actually that last one I did where I just went right into his face and said, Hey, you're going to have to hit me with a shotgun while I hip fire you. And as you can see, I do a lot of hip fire. And during the beta, I hit fired the shit out of people. Like, I hit fired everyone. And then, of course, they nerfed it for the full game, and I don't think it's nearly as effective as it used to be. You can still control it. Uh, don't get me wrong, you still control it pretty well, but A, people are getting better at moving, so you'll see people bouncing and everything. And there's a retro charge. If you guys want a lesson from the retro, if you take anything away, don't retro charge. It's not worth it 99% of the time. Just throwing that out there. It's fun, but that's my one lesson. It's my contribution. So here is uh, the clip. Again, everyone liked the digger thing last week, so... The big thing that I aim to do with the retro is get me shields. Uh, again, it's a close range weapon, so it's kind of like using a shotgun, but... The advantage that you have is that you're never going to chunk someone with a retro. 
So every single time you get down, there's a potential meat shield there. So uh, go ahead and absorb damage for a while. When you pick up a meat shield, you get smoke and you get pistol ammo from it. So you'll never really run out of pistol ammo if you're constantly picking up meat shields. And in King of the Hill especially, having a meat shield on the hill is completely invaluable. Like, it completely slows down progress and makes them throw a smoke at you or try to recklessly push you. It stops salt offs, stops shotguns. And as you see there, I used the hip fire and we won the round. So now we're talking about the weaknesses, and as I said, there's a lot of them. So the biggest issue that I was having was there's this weird thing. It's like the gun is meant to play up close, but with the sawed off as consistent as it is, pushing up close is really difficult. And the better your players you play against, pushing up close against a shotgun is really difficult. So it makes so you have this scenario where you have to hit every single bullet. And if you don't hit every single bullet, then you get chunked. So again, that hip fire, like I was saying earlier, was really strong during the beta. Now it's just not quite enough to handle that push, so you can't keep strafing backwards and hip firing because you're going to die to the shotguns eventually. And you can't play aggressively with it either because every corner can potentially be someone with a shotgun and you're saying it dropped instantly. So I'm not sure where the correct distance is for the retro. It's like, it's good at coming behind people, but like I said, almost every gun is good at coming behind people. And then you have this issue where no matter how good your feathering is, once that bloom starts going up, and that's why I said there's one shot's better. But once you get like two or three shots, that second and third shot's completely random inside of the circle. So there's no consistency. It's not always going towards the middle or anything. It's just they spray out. So sometimes you get lucky and you'll catch them. Sometimes you won't. And sometimes even with just a small chance of missing, you'll miss. And you can increase the odds of hitting them, but realistically, like, you're just, it's luck. A lot of times, and that's frustrating. But again, if you fire the one shot and then let it reset and then fire again, then it's always gonna go to the middle of the right kill. And part of having that big bloom is also that you can't suppress with the <laughs> retro. Like once they get in cover, you can't sit there and check them down like you could with a lancer or a hammer burst. You have to keep on running away essentially because you can't keep firing at it. You'll run out of ammo so quickly. And if someone's firing a lancer at you, you have no shot to stand with them if they're firing a uh, special fire. There's a way for you to reload and walk out wide on you. So a lot of times I'll end up scenarios like this. I had him, and any other gun like Lancer, I just keep firing on that wall and keep walking wide. But with the retro, I can't do that. And then you have scenarios like this where everyone on the other team is in cover, and normally I'd be sitting here putting fire in people, just seeing if I can get it down or get people real hurt so my teammates can get some damage. But with the retro, can't do anything. So before we put it all together, now I'm gonna tear it all down. So I ended up in this King of the Hill match. As you can see, it's a party of five. One of these guys, I think Killa TK, was like seventh place in the leaderboards for King of the Hills. So these guys play nonstop. We really had no shot, but I wanted to use it as an example of how kind of helpless you can feel with the retro. Uh, there's so many different scenarios where it's just like you can't do anything. You have to switch to your shotgun. And since I was doing the same thing I did with my Lancer video, I did two King of the Hill, one Execution, one TDM. So that's what all the gameplay is here. Uh, and my rule was that I could only use the retro. Because, like I said about me shields, I used the pistol as well, and in that execution match, I actually broke down and started using the shotgun because I couldn't finish anyone. So, I was trying to use the retro only in this King of the Hill against a team that I was clearly not going to be able to beat on my own, and this team that I had on my side wasn't that great. So, there's always different scenarios where it's just like, I felt completely worthless with the retro and was like, the only thing I could do in the scenario is switch to the shotgun and push. And I never get that feeling with the Lancer because it actually serves a different role in the shotgun. You know, you're putting in support fire, you're doing damage across map. You're able to assist your team even when you aren't in the thick of things. But the retro, your goal is to get into the thick of things. And once you get there, the shotgun is a better option in my opinion. No matter how bad your shotgun is, if you use the sawed off and you got that solution. And if you're using a Nasher, it's still better than the retro because if you get one shot and you can chunk people. So you can keep, you can move faster than you can with the retro, and then also you have the potential to kill people in one hit. And whenever there's two or three people, what good is downing someone? They're just gonna get picked up right away. And you'll see in several scenarios, I get someone down, and then my option is to go shoot them, finish off my clip, and have to reload if I have enough bullets left, or I can try and go for a meat shield on them, and then I'm putting myself in the middle of three shotguns. So it's like the downs don't really help you when you're against multiple people. So, I don't know, I just couldn't find much of any uses, and you'll see in a lot of these clips I keep running into that issue where they run behind cover and then I can't do anything. And when they go behind cover, it's just like, 
you're stuck standing there, and it's like you can't you can't shoot at them because they're behind wayside cover. A, the downtimes at any distance past close range are too long that you can't uh, finish them, and B, you have to hit the top of their body, and your bloom just spreads out so much that when it's at max, it only has like a 50% chance of hitting them with your random spray. So it's just that combination is crucial, and as you can see. Missed a few re retro bullets there, pay with it with a sawed off blast. Uh, if you let them get underneath your shot, you just get dominated with the retro. So, here I was like, they held control top control the entire first round, so I wasn't trying to contest it. I uh, should have just rolled back in this scenario. As you can see, they had four up there, so no chance going into that. And here you're going to see the issue. So, I'm here. Again, normally I'd be lancering. Even if I down that guy, what's worth, what's it worth? I can't finish him because I don't have enough bullets left in my clip, and I'm sitting there feathering, so if he wants to, he can roll away. If he's a good player, he'll roll away when I start damaging him. Uh, and like the issue with all those feather shots is I can get points in servers where people on my team are lancering a lot because I'll get like 40, 50 kill, uh, points per kill because I'm feathering, getting like three or four hits in. But I can't do anything uh, on my own. You know, There's no way to carry a match with the retro. As you can see there, I pushed up with the retro and just instantly got shotgun. And it's like, I might as well have a shotgun out there and be moving more stealthily than I would with the retro. And there, no way I'm gonna be able to down that guy. This guy, I think I got bolt as he shot, so that wasn't complete nonsense. But it's just so frustrating. As you can see, it's 102 to 0 in King of the Hill right now. And I got whooped. Uh, I never get whooped like this, even when I'm playing solo against anyone. Uh, this is the sole, sole benefactor, or it's not the right word. The big issue here is I was using the retro, and I could have used Shadi and at least gotten some kills and maybe helped get a little bit of a uh, hill time. And this was a lost cause going into it. We weren't going to win this match, and I'm not the best retro player, but look at these scenarios and tell me that I'm doing something like horribly wrong. It's just. There's so many times where people are just in cover, and as people get better, the weapons have become even worse because people are just going to uh, work their way around cover. You know about Gears 2, everyone was super fast around cover. Hey, we got some hill time. So it's like, the better people get, the worse you're going to be with it because it's not accurate, and that's the big thing. Uh, Hammer Burst, you can shoot people around cover. Lancer, you can just keep an endless stream so the moment they come off cover, you hit them. The Retro is a precision weapon which isn't very accurate. I guess if, I mean, that's the only way I can put it. And, and the hip fire isn't good enough to hold your own in a shotgun fight. Not against the very consistent sawed-offs and the Nashers. So, that's my stance. Uh, if you're going to use it, use it, like, all over the place. Just run, uh, do lots of flanks and that kind of thing. You'll get points. Uh, as you can see, I got plenty of kills in my other game types. But it's not that great. Uh, that's my final conclusion with the Retro. Again, the Lancer was an all-around weapon. Retro is very situational. See you guys next week, probably on an uh, update on the DLC. Later.